Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Garrett Heron, CEO and publisher of Vote Hub. Garrett, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. We are excited to speak with you, especially less than 20 days from Election Day as we sit here right now. And early voting has started in some states across the country. So what are you seeing? Well, right now, the early voting picture is mixed. Um, it's good for Democrats. It's not great for Democrats. Um, it varies according to state. Um, so at Vote Hub, right now, we are tracking the results in Pennsylvania, uh, in North Carolina, in Wisconsin, and in Florida. Um, and you know, right now, Michigan looks pretty good for Democrats. Uh, in Detroit, for instance, uh, the ballot return rate's around 40%. Um, that's higher than we've seen in previous elections. In Deep Blue Flint, it's also about 40%. Um, Pennsylvania is a little more of a mixed bag. Um, so Democrats are doing a little better right now, but the number of early votes this time in Pennsylvania doesn't really have early voting in the traditional sense. They have mail voting, um, but it's going to be a, a much smaller proportion of the total uh, number of votes this year than compared to 2020, for instance. And so uh, even though a lot of people are really interested in early voting analysis, understandably so, it's very exciting. Um, you know, early voting is just going to make up a smaller proportion of the total number of votes this time compared to 2020. And so I would say there's a lot more uncertainty now. Um, even though Democrats are doing pretty well in the early vote, there are going to be a lot of Republicans who show up on Election Day. I want to talk about something that you said at the beginning of your answer, and you said this is good news for Democrats, not great news. Historically, early voting is better for Democrats. So why is this in that gray area of good, not great? Yeah, so right now, um, even though Democrats started off really strong in Pennsylvania, for instance, um, the first day of early voting, Democrats had over 70% of the total vote uh, in mail returns. Republicans have just been chipping away at that. Uh, so last week, for instance, there were a couple of days where Republicans actually outnumbered Democrats in the return rate. And also right now, we're seeing new voter registrations. And in Pennsylvania, Republicans continue to register more voters than Democrats do. And so you have to look at the holistic picture um, because Republicans are uh, starting to return more ballots than Democrats are. And we're expecting that Republicans are going to show up in a really big way on Election Day. Uh, Democrats just can't take anything for granted. Early voting we've been tracking now for about a week or so. So what type of picture is it painting when it comes to turnout or trends? Does it foreshadow anything that we're going to see on Election Day? You know, I don't know that it does. Um, so I know that's an unsatisfactory answer for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, right now, I think that uh, if, if we if 2020 were a normal election, we could make a better comparison um, to it than right now. But it is comparing apples and oranges because in 2020, so many people were early voting um, to give you an idea of how um, this may shape out in Pennsylvania in 2020, 6 million people uh, voted in the presidential election. About half of those ballots cast were mail ballots. Um, this time around, uh, we'll probably see around 6 million again, maybe fewer, maybe a little bit more, depends on turnout. Um, but only 1.7 million ballots have been requested. So that's a small, uh, much smaller proportion of the total electorate that's going to be uh, voting early. And we saw record numbers in Georgia for the first day of early voting there. So I know you said there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot in the air now. But what do we know when you look at the demographics when it comes to early voting? Is there any pattern or trend emerging that you see as of now? So in Georgia, it's interesting. Um, the Georgia has 159 counties and uh, in the top five counties that had the highest turnout in the early vote were actually deep red Republican counties that gave Trump 70 plus percent of the vote in 2020. Um, but at the same time, uh, we know that the electorate the, the, uh, on the first day of early voting in Georgia was uh, uh, less uh, white than in uh, 2020. Um, and so uh, it was only a percentage or two, um, but it's still significant. Um, there 
are a lot of new voters um, who uh, voted on the first day of early voting. Um, those new voters, we're not sure whether that benefits Democrats or uh, Republicans. We've had uh, polling to suggest that Donald Trump is doing a little bit better um, than in 2020 with uh, brand new voters. Um, Democrats are now do, are performing even better um, with uh, voters who are higher propensity, who show up uh, for every election. And so that's one reason I say we have to take this with a grain of salt, um, which I know is an unsatisfactory answer. Um, but it's because Democrats are higher propensity. And so it's no surprise that they're starting out really strong out of the gate because these are super voters. Um, and also no surprise that in the days um, after that first day, uh, Republicans are doing a little better and better. It's not an unsatisfactory answer just because we won't know till election night then a few days after. But as we've been covering this for two years, people want to know now. So I understand. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I definitely understand why people are chomping at the bit trying to get this data. But as we know, this election is a race to 270 electoral votes, and it's right. coming down to those seven battleground states. The polls are showing a razor thin race, but we're less than two weeks or less than three weeks out now. So how is the math looking to you? Well, um, you know, you would rather be ahead in the polls than behind in the polls. Um, but, you know, right now, uh, Vote Hub is uh, tracking the polls and six of the seven uh, battleground states as of today and our polling averages are within one percentage point. Now, um, Kamala Harris uh, still has the lead in the Electoral College, if you were to translate those polling averages onto the Electoral College, um, but it's really fragile. Um, so we're only a couple of days away. Donald Trump has had some pretty good polling uh, recently in the Rust Belt. Um, and so uh, just in the past uh, month, he's actually seen uh, a two-point shift in Wisconsin. He's seen a 2.6 point shift in Michigan uh, in his direction. Um, and uh, in Pennsylvania, he's uh, seen a one point shift. And so, uh, you know, if you're behind in the polling averages, you, you'd rather not be, but he does have some late breaking momentum um, in, uh, in late October. And as we sit here, we're eagerly awaiting November 5th, like I said, less than 20 days out. What are you looking for when it when you're a numbers guy, you're a data guy? What are you specifically looking for? What numbers are you looking at between now and November 5th? Yeah, so um, I would say we're mostly looking at the polling. Um, so a lot of people, they want to read the tea leaves looking at the early vote analysis, and we're guilty of that as well um, in presenting that information on our website. Um, but polling is the number one predictor of what is going to happen in this election. And even then, it's imperfect. Um, the average polling error that we see in any given presidential election is about three points. Uh, and right now, Kamala Harris, and that's at a national level, Kamala Harris leads in our polling average by 2.5 uh, right now. Um, and in, in the battleground states, it's even closer. And so we could very well see a picture, even though it's tied right now and it looks like it will go down to the wire. Even if we have an average polling error, that could result in an electoral college blowout for either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. And that would be expected historically. And as we know, in 2016, Donald Trump overperformed the polls. We know in 2020, Donald Trump did lose, but he did overperform the polls as well. In 2022, there was supposed to be a red wave. It ended up being more of a red trickle. In 2024, do you think the polling has evened out? Is there a chance Donald Trump could overperform like he did it in the past two presidential elections? What do you think that looks like? Well, there certainly is a chance that he could uh, overperform the polling again. What's interesting about this year compared to 2020 and 2016 is that the popular vote is, uh, it, there's something called the Electoral College bias, which is the difference between the uh, lead in the national popular vote and the lead in the closest swing state that gets the leader over the finish line. And that Electoral College bias is much smaller this year 
compared to 2020 and 2016, if you believe the polling averages at face value at the swing state level and at the national level. Um, one reason that may be the case um, is that we're seeing voters who traditionally vote Dem uh, Democrat in uh, deep blue states like California, New York, and New Jersey uh, shifting to the right uh, at a higher rate than swing state voters are shifting to the right. And so when we look at the national polling averages this year, it may not be telling us all that much about the electorate um, and what the eventual outcome is going to be as much as the swing state polling averages. Well, there's certainly a lot to look out for between now and November 5th. And Garrett, I hope you come back on and join me and break it down as we get closer to Election Day. Thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you.